eight eleven. We welcome back our co-host, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield, Delegate Michael Height, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning, Rob. Uh, Eastern Panhandle talks uh, Friday. Five crew will begin at nine forty this morning and go until eleven o'clock as we continue broadcasting the extra hour all week long. We'll do that Monday and at least Tuesday as well. We welcome in Board of Education member Melissa Power on this Friday morning. Melissa, thank you for coming in today. Good morning, Rob. It's uh, I would say it's a pleasure to be here, but obviously under certain circumstances, uh, we've got some issues, and I wanted to be out front and transparent with everybody. We appreciate you doing that. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and taking it uh, full front here today. When I read the story that uh, Metro News had posted mm -hmm. and then the uh, ensuing press releases, and I don't mean this lightheartedly because I'm not trying to disrespect a very serious situation at North Middle. Mm -hmm. It reminded me of watching Welcome Back Cotter with the Sweat Hogs. If you're of a certain age, remember that TV show where uh, effectively they were lampooning a, a Brooklyn public high school and the, uh, the gangs that roamed the hallways and how unsafe it might have been for those who are just trying to get an education. Mm -hmm. And as I read that story, that's the first thought that popped into my mind Melissa 160 fights 24% mm -hmm. proficiency in reading 6% proficiency in math that is hard to believe that is going on in Berkeley County yesterday the state superintendent of schools Michelle Blatt was on when I asked her how many other times during her tenure they've had to move in and take over a school I was expecting six seven eight the answer was this is just the second time yeah this is a disaster it is a disaster uh, and I I would love to be able to tell you that uh, the board members were presented with this information. Uh, we were not. So to um, see things or hear things, I should say, on Wednesday morning, because uh, I listened in to the state board of education meeting, I was appalled. Uh, my mouth was probably on the floor. My jaw was probably on the floor more than it was anything else. Uh, and I can tell you I was quiet. I'm not a quiet person. You probably have <laughs> You're boisterous. already. I'm boisterous. Um, I was quiet. Uh, and I didn't have words to say at that particular moment because I was, and I still am, extremely upset, extremely frustrated. Um, I don't have all the answers I'd like to have at the moment. And I don't believe that this is a situation that can be uh, minimized in you, any in any way. You mentioned the board was not given this information Correct. about North Middle School. Who would be responsible for giving the Berkeley County Board of Education this information? Sure. So February 21st is going to be a pivotal date that I'm going to reference. Uh, throughout Last year uh, and into this year, the Board of Education during meetings, we would ask for updates. We would ask for information regarding our two schools that were classified as CSI schools. We received... Uh, CSI. Uh, the, these are the comprehensive school... Uh, in, uh, I'm going to get... Yes, I'm going to... I always get the CSI specifically okay. me messed up with the, the meaning. But basically, those are those schools that they've been identified as low-performing schools. And so this because of that, uh, the state comes in and they work with the school um, administrators, the school teachers, uh, support staff, as well as central office employees uh, to increase uh, their performance um, from a... Um, the lack of a better word, a testing perspective, making sure that the kids are getting educated the way that they need to and, and how they can prepare kids, you know, uh, better for the tests um, that they're going to take. So and, you know, and hoping that they improve um, academically. That's I'm the, sorry, I interrupted you. are talking mm -hmm. about February 23rd. Yeah. 21st. 21st. So February 21st. 21st. So if anybody ever wants to go take a look at what the Board of Education was provided, the board members were provided as far as information, you can go back to the February 21st meeting that is on the uh, YouTube page for Berkeley County Schools. And you can actually watch the presentation that not only did the uh, school administration provide to us, but the central office also uh, was there to to help 
answer some questions that we had after that presentation. Nowhere in that presentation did it indicate there were issues of the magnitude that was presented to the state board. Mm -hmm. And we did ask questions regarding behaviors. We did ask questions regarding test scores. And this is what I will say to anybody and everybody who, who um, deals with statistics um, or read, you know, reading them, creating them, whatever that looks like. You can make any statistic look good, no matter how bad it is. You can make it look good. And that is what I believe happened in this particular case. If what was presented, and I say if, because of a couple of, couple of different reasons. If what was presented was exactly the way it was portrayed at the state board, then those statistics were absolutely skewed that was given to us and we were not given an accurate picture and, who gave and we them relied to you? the school administration and the central office and we relied to are there names associated with that <laughs> you can go on the february 21st uh uh there, there are public names so you can tell us right now well the, the school administration <laughs> the you school would be administration to I, i'm talking i'm talking about north middle school uh, the principal was there. She gave the presentation primarily. She answered some questions um, at the time. Uh, we also asked questions of, I believe, uh, Holly Kleppner, um, a couple other school board or school uh, uh, central office employees, and also received some information from Mr. Stevens. Okay. Mr. Height. So uh, I guess you're in, I believe you indicated mm -hmm. there, this just isn't North Middle. Are, are there more than one school okay. in Berkeley County yeah. that are under CSI? There is one other school that is under CSI, and that's Winchester Avenue. Winchester Avenue, from all intents and purposes, even from the communication that we received from the state, um, or I shouldn't say received communication, what we heard at the state board meeting on Wednesday was that school is improving. So I have every confidence that the information that we were we received on February 21st regarding Winchester Avenue is accurate. The problem that I'm I'm running into is how accurate was it? Um, is it in line with how the state feels? I don't know the answer to that question at this particular moment, but that is a question in, in my head, you know, rolling around in my head. It also sounds like you're you're insinuating that um, the problems at uh, North Middle mm -hmm. were a whole lot worse than what was being portrayed in the in the February 21st meeting. Yes. And that there was, uh, I hate to use cover-up, but a, a cover-up of, yeah. of true, yes. uh, truly what was going on. So when we were looking at the behavior statistics that they provided, they gave us things like, these are how many, um, and each school is different how they start doing disciplinary action. So I don't want to necessarily, I, I'm not going to get into the weeds of that, but things meaning, uh, um, tail slips, uh, I believe is what they, they call them. Those are like, you know, little referral slips that you would get, uh, things that you know, little, little things that you would, you know, you, you were late for class or you were in the hallway without a pass or things like that, that you could get, uh, some sort of disciplinary action on, or if you get so many, you're going to end up having, you know, um, some sort of like detention, whether that's, you know, um, um, during, uh, lunch detention or or something like that there would be some level but it would be a minor infraction would be considered minor um then there were statistics for out of school suspensions and in school suspensions um and i believe there was another category and i'm not gonna don't quote me on it um but those were the numbers we were given and we were given a snapshot into a very short window of time during that time frame I dare say that they were, a, it was a large number of um, disciplinary actions that were taken. I also, we, we did receive information that um, indicated that had been an improvement from previous, uh, previous time frames so of the, the same, of the same the, length. Is the discipline happening at North Middle or is it? there's too much discipline or there's not, there are no consequences for uh, students actions. What is the overall, I mean, you're getting information, but what information right. are, is it what they're doing or what they're not doing? So at this point, what I have, the information I have for you to answer that question is the information we received during the state school board meeting 
and how it conflicts with what we were presented on February 21st. That is a question that is a hard conversation and a question that we have. The school board, uh, because this will need to take place for an, during an open meeting, um, we are not able to do that without certain number of days notice. So Monday is going to be the day that we are able to have that meeting and start having those conversations uh, with our central office. We wanted to make sure that it is it is you know on our agenda to to start having those hard conversations and in my opinion um, my my desire is to not necessarily go into executive session because i think this is something that needs to be out in the open um, we need to have candid open honest lay out all the cards on the table as much as we can without having to disclose student names sure. um, because i don't want to do do that but um we need we need answers we need answers. Yeah, I, let's shift away a little bit from what happened there to the process of what we did not hear. Yeah. Uh, everybody uh, campaigns on transparency. Absolutely. There's also the Board of Education. There has to be some place in every organization where the crewmanism, the buck stops here, applies. Mm -hmm. And I view that as the Board of Education. Sure. A uh, couple of questions, Melissa. Is one, I gather from you, and let me ask both questions before you answer. <laughs> uh, I gather from you, one, you, you and the fellow board members did not know about the Mm -hmm. until the report came out in the, uh, to Metro News uh, or came out for the State, State Board, Board of Education. Of Education yeah. The second question, more pertinent, is why did so an organization mm -hmm. in Charleston have a privy to this information when a local Board of Education did not That's have? That's a great question. So, uh, so the, the buck has to stop where? I think it has to stop with the Board of Education, but it appears you didn't. I, I do not do anything about it. Yeah. I, I do disagree with that. Okay. And I'll give you, I'll give you a reason sure. why. Um, we do not have access to Weavis. So we, yes, are. Excuse um, me, and that we, and, and Weavis, what is that? Weavis yeah. is our, our West Virginia um, information system. That's where things get plugged in, like disciplinary actions, grades, um, um, information about each individual student, whether they have allergies to, um, you know, certain foods. So we need to make sure that they, you know, get the proper lunches, um, you know, dispensed to them or uh, how to contact the parents, what that contact with parents look like, look, looks like their attendance record. We don't have access to Weavis. So we are left with receiving information from the central office. We are not, we, we are not employed by, I am not employed by Berkeley County Schools. Okay, I'm not employed by them. I didn't go to them for an interview. I went before uh, Berkeley County residents and said, please hire me to be on the school board and I will do my best of my ability to represent you. And right now as a representative, I'm pissed because I feel lied to. So how can I come to you and give you answers? I don't have any. What I can tell you is this is the reason why I don't have answers. I, can, I am left to receiving information from central office and administration and those that are working within that building. If no one is reaching out to me that contradicts or tells me something looks different than what was painted on the February 21st meeting, I'm not gonna know. And visiting one hour or maybe even two hours is not going to give me a clear picture. The state, the state officials that were there were, were there all day. I don't have the ability to do that. That would, that is, that for, for myself, I work full time. I do this. I do, I do this. Mm -hmm. Give me one second. I don't have the ability to be there 24-7, 365. But the key point, I think you said uh, before, I'm going to make a key mm -hmm. point, but a uh, yeah. clarification. You used the term central office. I think you're talking about the State Board of Education there, are you not? No, that, central office. We receive central. We receive where, information who, who, from central office. Is local that, Board of Education. Winchester Avenue Central. Okay, Winch, Winchester local, Avenue. Uh, okay, Berkeley County see, School yeah. Central okay, Office. Yeah. I apologize. Yes. Okay. And then the administration, you're talking about who? Administration, I'm talking about Mr. Stevens and okay. his assistant okay, superintendents fine. and the directors underneath. Okay. But the FISA, FISA, what do you call it? That goes to the State Board of Education, and you do not get it? That's where you just mentioned that, that report. The Weavis, the, the Weavis, the, sorry, the, the Weavis. Yeah, yeah, that's that stuff is is uh, utilized by Berkeley County Schools staff to input information, and then it is accessed by other uh, West Virginia state uh, school 
um, you know, Department of Education, um, the those individuals who, who work directly with gathering information on each but individual But you have county. no access to I that. I have no access to that. that. That when you say you, you're talking about the and local board boards, of education the, has no access no to No board, it. no board member in the state of West Virginia has access to Weavis. The only thing that we have access to is the state report card, which is what everybody sees. And unfortunately, the state report card is, yes, it's updated, but it's not as in my opinion, not as up-to-date as I would like it to be. Melissa, you know, with just want to get this yeah. in be before. Uh, there, there was two things that uh, stood out to me on that report besides the yeah. one was the discipline. Mm -hmm. The other was the 6% and the 24% stats on mathematics and reading <sighs> yes. comprehension. Yes. That doesn't begin no, in does middle not. school. It, there had to be a failure yes. all along the way leading up to Correct. middle school. Correct. So w part of this Were, is... And you guys weren't aware of that either? So what? one of the things that we are provided is, especially during that meeting, to give you... Um, and and I, I will address all of that. Just sure. let me... I need to paint the picture from, from here and then and work backwards. Um, when we were presented information regarding the education um, and the changes that they were hoping to see or, or thought they were seeing or are seeing, um, they utilized IXL information and that's a platform that we utilize in schools to assist in uh, the academic um, arenas there's the, it, it's filled with and, and I'm thinking of IXL math specifically it gives you exercises that the kids can work on um, to help improve them prove their skills in a certain area um, whether that's addition subtraction algebraic equations whatever that might look like um, and the information that we were provided were statistics on what they were seeing with IXL participation and how many were moving to the next level from where they had been previously we were seeing slow improvements uh, i would i would define it as slow improvements um with that information but like i said any any statistic presented can be skewed so it did not give the picture of what was created down at the state board of education that we had such a lack of literacy um, and excellence occurring in that in, in in that particular school you have to also look at um now I'm going to go to the, a different aspect. The population that um, an Eagle Intermediate School is is a school that feeds into North Middle. Um, so does Tuscarora, and I want to say there's one other school, and I can't remember. I Pecan. know Jackie Long will probably. <laughs> uh, I think so. Um, it, some of those schools uh, have a higher um, transient population. And with that being said, the, the students are not getting consistency that they're going to need. Um, when I say consistency, they could be transferring from school to school to school, and they're going to have, they're not going to be used to a classroom, to a teacher. To, once they're need, there gets to be a routine and gets to be any, any established understanding of that particular student, they might move to a different school because the parents are moving or the grandparents are moving or whoever they're staying with is is moving or um, maybe they're in foster care or, or whatever what have you whatever that looks like so there there is an aspect of that that is very very difficult um i am of the mindset that we need to take a hard look at how our lines are divided within the county um if one particular school has nothing but a lot of um, transient population, that school obviously is n likely not going to do well. And, ha and this school has not done well for a number of years. This is not, this is not a new um, to topic of conversation when it comes to North Middle. Uh, this, this school has, has experienced issues for a long time has it come to a head absolutely do we need to address it absolutely can we be can we do better than this absolutely and we need to figure out we need to go in figure out what's working what's not get rid of what's working improve what is and maybe come up with something else that that you know we're not we're not looking at the other thing that i will tell you is what i'm one thing i'm disappointed on and this is something I would say directly to the State um, Department of Education. If you are providing reports to our central office regarding our schools, 
I'd love to see a copy of the reports. I have not seen a copy of any report. They stated that they have, they issue a report, they, you know, they document how their visit went, they document what needs to be done. We're not seeing it. Well, I don't have a copy of a report. Most of we're just about out of yeah, time. In fact, we're a few seconds over. Uh, the contract for the superintendent is on the agenda for Monday, as I understand it. Yes, any, it is. Any idea how that vote's going to go? I, I don't even know that we're going to have a vote. It, these, these are conversations that we still, that we're still having. We're, we're, we're still in, in conversations. You voted against the superintendent last time. Yes, are you sir. more or less inclined to do the same this time? I'm not pre prepared to give a public comment on whether or not I am prepared or not. Um, I can tell you that this comes at, at the worst time for anybody and everybody. I know I'm up for re-election, and if you vote for me, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine. I get it. I'm not leaving the schools. I will be volunteering in the schools if I don't get re-elected. Um, I'm not leaving. There are, there's work to be done, and there are different ways that you can go about getting the work done. So I'm, I'm dedicated to this, and I'm not going anywhere. Melissa, thank you so much for coming in. I appreciate yeah, you coming absolutely. in and taking the heat. Thank you. It is 831. We are back with uh, Governor Jim Justice and uh, Mike Heights' new best friend, uh, Brian Abraham. Uh, via telephone. <laughs> May I give one awesome. more plug, Rob? Rob? Please, yes. Okay, so um, the uh, state school board um, has put out for comment policy 4373 it's an amendment ex for expected behavior in safe and supportive schools it is the comments is uh is open now i believe um up until may 27th at 4 p.m so if you have any comments go through that policy 4373 if you have any comments please review and provide the state um, with your comments regarding that policy thank you melissa absolutely more to come